Code Rage 2019. Welcome to my session about Fluid Creation, a better way to create components at runtime. And here are the topics. If you never heard of the Fluent Creation, no problem, I will show a short example. Second, a little introduction into my FireMonkey development kit. And then the main part about my way to create visual components at runtime. As you can see, the last topic has an attribute because it is not included in this short skill sprint. You can find the full version of this session on my YouTube channel. If you don't know me, my name is Frank Lauter. I'm a German developer and an Embarcadero MVP. I've started my Turbo Pascal development in 1984 on CPM for the Z80 CPU. With the release of XE2 in the year 2011, my journey with FMX began, and with XE6, which I like to call the first stable version of FireMonkey, I started my collection of helpful functions to build FMX apps quicker, as by clicking everything together in the IDE. After the first release of my FDK in 2017, I realized that the name was a bad decision, because most of the units in my kit are also usable with VCL, but I decided to keep the name. In addition to my normal job, I offer services in development of apps, remote training, source code reviews and consulting. So let's get started with an example of a simple fluent interface. The trick is to use functions with the result of the same object, or in this case, the interface. So with this method, we would like to get two JSON strings, one for the header information and the other one for the real data. Here is the implementation of the interface. There's a fire burning out on the street. I can't bear the heat. You claim it was my fault, but I know it was you still hiding the truth. And here we go. Easy to understand, easy to read, and of course, a major point, less to write. Before we start with the main topic, if you want more information about my FireMonkey development kit, please visit my website delphiprofi.com. I recently did the translation. And under FDK, you will find some information and also a list of the included units. More information will be available with the release of version 2 in 2020. Okay, now to the main topic. Since we want to keep this tutorial short, I've speeded things up a bit. File new FireMonkey application. Shrink it to the size of an old iPhone. Design the common UI elements like toolbar with a label, align content. A back button with a margin of 6 pixels. A tab control with two tabs, one tab with a list box, the other tab we will see later. I like to keep the tabs visible because it's easier at design time. So we have to disable the tabs and also make sure that our first tab item is selected, whatever we had last designed in the IDE. If anything is designed, clear the list box. Save the project, set the caption. I have already prepared a person view and some kind of fake database so we do not need any SQLite stuff for the little demo. I've also prepared the loop to get some address datasets from the fake DB, so we can start to create our first list box item at runtime. Save the index to the tag property. The on-click procedure to show the complete dataset is also already in place. Same with the back button handler. Let's give it a try. Unlike on iOS and Android, the default item height is not set, so we have to adjust it. 49 is a good value for a listbox item 
with button detail. Here we go, a working application. Perhaps you are using a list view and not a list box, but in the old versions of FireMonkey the list view was hard to use. And from my point of view, the list view designer is still not easy and I do not like to use live bindings. So I assume you like to improve the look of your list box, perhaps with some colors and more labels, some general settings, a little bit margins, a better font size and perhaps color. As you can see this is not working, because if you want to set these values you have to disable the styling of the properties. Here we go. That is what we expected. Of course we all like the copy buffer stuff. By the way, this is an old term from the pre-DOS area. Nowadays we call it clipboard, but we keep the copy buffer problem by not setting all properties after copying. Ok, looks better. Let's add an indication bar to show if it is a girl or a boy. Blue for the boys and pink for the ladies. Top alignment is preferred against right or left, so we need another container. And of course, change all the parents. Adjust the height. And again some margins. Here we go, our final result. Looking not so bad, but we had a lot of typing and horrible, unmaintainable code if the customer wants some changes. So here is my way to handle this kind of runtime creation. Just add FDK to the search pass, use my Fluent Creator, change the creation of the list box item to my constructor and as you can see it's still working. Now we start to add everything we need in one line without repeating list box item again and again. I prefer to split the line so it is more readable. This little call to item more just sets t list box item data dot t accessory dot a more. Now the same with the rectangle. A much better way to set the margins. No stroke is the same as stroke kind equals brush kind none. Same with solid fill. It is possible to include conditions in the fluent design. Skip the number of steps if the condition is not true and one step if the color is already set. Still working. I think this is much better to read, less to write but still a little bit the same as creating it the normal way. Besides the one statement function, the magic starts with the registration of settings. You can register a default setting and also different configurations. With this configuration the complete create in the old style is not necessary anymore. I prepared a simpler version of this list box, because this video exceeded already the given time limit. Sorry for that. And if you take a look at the final for loop, you can see how simple it is to create the list box item with my Fluent Creator. The full version of this tutorial will be available on my YouTube channel in the next days. Thank you for your attention.
More information will be at my website under delphiprofi.com slash codeRage2019. If you are looking for more information about my ideas and fire monkey development, please take a look at my blog under delphiprofi.blogspot.de. Yes, DE, but my blog is written in English language.